at a college once and this guy sort of like stuck with me uh, and he was so convinced that you need like uh, some sort of uh, innate talent to do it and I was I kept on trying I'm like dude like you know I just I just kind it and he's like yeah but you have the talent and I could see on his face that he was so defeated by like the stuff that we were showing them they don't and uh, it's it's very unfortunate but it's like anyone can do it it's just they just really need to put in the time and effort that's all it boils down to you're listening to art heroes podcast the show to help you thrive as a digital artist tune in to learn how to transform your passion into a career get inspired by other kick-ass 2d and 3d artists and find out what it takes to be an art hero all right we're on air uh hi nico (laughs) welcome everyone to the art heroes podcast nico thank you so much for coming on the show uh guys today we're having nico lee lazarus nico has a pretty fascinating story although nico (laughs) is now in berlin nico is from joburg yes okay so joburg South Africa and Nico is a concept artist. It's a pretty different persona in our lineup. So it's not <laughs> about 3D today. Today we're talking about concept art. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. Let's uh, get into it. Welcome, Nico. Huh? Thank you for having me. It's, yeah. It was quite a surprise to get the call, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm of glad course. you guys invited me. Come on. Well, of course, like, you know, I feel like I know so much about your work because here at Art Heroes Academy, we've got so many students from Stylized <laughs> Program, all of them choosing your work as their concept of choice <laughs> because they're like, oh, really, yes, they're so unique, all the characters. And oh, you know, cool. now I've seen them in 2D and some of them in 3D. So, yeah. you know, like, pleasure talking to you now so i'm really interested yeah in yeah learning the story and i mean that also blew my mind just uh, seeing the my stuff coming to life uh, <laughs> yeah that's that's like magical to me it's like it's awesome yeah i can imagine it's like you know second life of the character like now yeah. like, with volumes and shapes all right so let's go ahead um we had a little bit of chat before so i know little bits and pieces um from the very beginning, um, so now that you're in Six More Vodka, but before then you were in South Africa, how did the concept art story start for you? Did you study this? Did you straight get a job? Are you like a prodigy or something? What are you? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was a prodigy. No, it, it was uh, it was a grueling road for sure. Uh, okay. I mean, I... I knew I wanted to do art pretty young. Uh, I was a big Disney fan and I think I was nine and I saw the making of like Lion King and, you know, watching the animators uh, do their flipping of the pages and it blew my mind. So I always wanted to be working for Disney as an animator, traditional animator. Uh, Eventually finished high school uh, and then went on to uh, pursue a animation degree at a university. But, the animation degree was postgrad, so I needed to do uh, two years of fine art first. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so and that fine was art. that was a tricky two years for me because I was fighting everything that I knew and everything that I wanted to do to sort of uh, get the grades, and uh, I, I hated it. So ended up not going to class um, and then just chilling in the library. Uh, I didn't have access to internet at home. So I would use the computer labs and just, you know, browse YouTube, looking for anything I could find. Uh, and I found Feng Zhu's, uh channel. And I was like, concept art? Well, what the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, and I looked at like all the stuff that I was doing in my sketchbooks. And, and it was like, it was concept art. I was doing turnarounds on characters. I was doing designs. Uh, and so I was like, spoke to my parents i was like look this is what i want to do i need to go uh dad was like okay cool uh but uh in this house it's either you're working or you're studying and since you're not going to study rent is due on the first (laughs) interesting uh, (laughs) yeah and then so i got i got a retail job working in a in a toy store uh 
and then from there started working. My uncle showed me some uh, graphic design tools. Uh, and then from there, got into graphic design and then worked at a signage company. And then from there, worked there for two years, then jumped into advertising. Uh, and then while, while I was doing my graphic design, going home at night, just working on concept art, you know, got myself a cheap tablet, working on Photoshop, just, you know, trying to figure it out. Um, and then two years into advertising, uh, I got contacted on Facebook uh, through a friend. Uh, and they were like, hey, you know, my boyfriend works at this uh, company. Uh, they might be looking for a concept artist. Uh, and I was like, okay, cool. And then he contacted me and we spoke and I was all excited. And then silence for six months. So I was like, what? And then eventually after six months, got that message like, hey, we got the opening come through. Uh, went in with my portfolio. It was this little... Uh, mobile game studio. Uh, it was called, at the time, uh, Luma Arcade. Uh, and then they brought me in and they were a full like art production house. So they had the full pipeline from concept into, into game. But I was their first concept artist. Uh, and my right. first job was designing 60 fantasy characters. What? <laughs> and also feeding this whole pipeline of uh, 3D artists. So, yeah, that's basically my start. Just got thrown into the deep end. Uh, and then, yeah, worked for them for four years. Went from junior artist to art director. Uh, Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> tell me more about, like, having 60 fantasy characters to design as your first job. <laughs> I, I mean, it was, it was daunting because I've never I worked mean, like, in a I really want to know how much coffee or how much whatever else did you have to consume <laughs> to create 60 fantasy characters out of nothing. Like, that's a lot of inspiration, man. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, luckily the, the team themselves were a great team. So I got a lot of support. Uh, the scary part was like being in the pipeline, they were like, dude, you bottleneck it. Because by the time I finish one character, it gets passed down the line. But then they're like waiting for the second character already. So it's like, uh, how am I gonna do this fucking thing? You know, it's like <laughs> it was it was crazy. So I mean, I was going home working crazy overtime. Uh, my boss even made a joke. He's like, okay, everyone can like go home for like two weeks uh, and then come back. We will have all the concept art ready. So, uh, but yeah, it it was stressful. But like, I was so excited to be there. All right. So you stayed there for four years. Yes. All right. And you worked your way all the way up to becoming the, was it art director? Yes. Wow. Interesting. Uh, well, that's pretty fast though, no? <laughs> was it like the influence uh, of the 60 fantasy characters that put <laughs> you on their shoulders? <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, I, I think what was what was great about the studio is they they recognized like uh, when people put in effort and they rewarded it. So I mean I was just constantly working overtime trying to skill up. Uh, and I remember like being in the office late with my boss. It was just me and him, and he was like uh, Lee, like you know, like what position are you again? I'm like junior, and he's like, okay, we need to like rectify that. Uh, and this was like after a year, and then every year I got uh, promotion. A bump up, but yeah, uh, but also just asking for more responsibilities because I was getting comfortable with the work and the pipeline. And also, my, my first uh, design that I'd done was like this boss, uh, and I knew nothing about game design. And so, designed this crazy guy with crazy spikes, and, and they were like, uh, dude, this is too expensive. Uh, I was like, expensive uh we need money and they were like no 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 like polygons you know like it's not ah. going to be able to build it and perform and i was like oh and so it was a new world for me i needed to learn the technical side of games and uh, everything that goes into engine and uh, it was it was a crazy time but uh, a steep learning curve but very fun 
Fun, fun. Yeah. So, um, and that's where things become really interesting because I know that at Six More Vodka now, after all these years of climbing your way in South Africa, you're a junior mm. concept artist back again. Talk to me about that, yeah. you know, like how does <laughs> it feel like being that and like, you know, just at least formally and is it different? Does it make at least any impact impact on you? What you're called, or like, do you feel that you're doing less now? Like, just in general, how do you compare being an art director in South Africa versus a junior concept artist in in Six Mile Vodka? I mean, I mean, um, there's also a bit of relief because being art director, you know, half of my day was meetings. Uh, I was scheduling. I was chasing people for work, uh, and then I still had my art deliverables on top of that um, uh, and so it's it's nice to come back down to just being creative and just making art uh, and not having to deal with the politics of clients and uh, managing too many people uh, yeah and and initially when I came in I was like uh, so if I do well you guys promise that you know I can I can climb up in the company and they were like yeah and you know I thought I was going to come in be the best junior they've ever seen you know and just like climb up the, the prodigy ranks. don't forget the prodigy <laughs> yeah and uh yeah no that was not the case uh, I got there and I realized why I was brought in as a junior very quickly um, the skill level is very different to what I experienced in South Africa wow um, that it's, is very honest. A, I mean, thanks for saying that, yeah. but like, this is very honest. Thanks for that. <laughs> no, no, for, for real. It's like, uh, I, I, thought, I thought I knew something about art until I got to SMV and I was like, okay, maybe I don't know as much as I thought I did. Uh, and why which, do you think that's is, the case? Like, why do you think there is this gap? Um, so, so SA in, in itself, South Africa is just like the, the ceiling is pretty low. Uh, mm -hmm. in terms of and as soon as people get good enough uh, most of them leave yeah so there's no real uh, big industry it's starting to develop now with some studios back home in Cape Town especially um, but yeah there, there's just like there's a bunch of people coming up and there's no scope uh, there's there's no real uh, big projects that were happening at the time you know, so, okay. uh, and, and one of the reasons that we had the mobile studio that we had is that it was a American company. And so we were basically the art house that they built in South Africa. So like the outsourcing unit. Yes, basically. Right. Got it. Got it. But, uh, um, I get an impression that this is the case for many, um, I don't want to call it like developing countries necessarily, but for many you know, um, kind of a second tire uh, countries in a way where mm -hmm. the art scene and the specifically digital art scene is not that mm -hmm. well developed. It's just the case with that people live to like bigger hubs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, it's it's just also it's like, uh, you know, like it, I, I knew about concept art when I was like 20. I learned that it was a thing, you know. Um, everyone is animating and get a lot of people that like uh, end up in advertising or graphic design studios just because like uh, they study game design but then there's just no place for them to uh, participate in you know definitely so definitely it's a so it's a very unfortunate uh, thing and I, and I think like you know when the country uh, really doesn't have a uh, a, a good foundation it's hard for them to really develop like a, an art industry you know it's like that is like also just secondary to uh, everything else that uh, develops around uh, the stability of a country so no 100 percent. and as an artist you have yeah. to start somewhere small actually as any um any professional you've got to, you've got to have the industry where to start and then where to grow like, yeah if you're Basically. missing one of the bits it's not going to work for you. Like, yeah. I mean, the scene is not going to go higher in any case. Mm -hmm. So what was your story about 
moving from South Africa, from what I remember, which told me uh, it, you just moved to Berlin recently, like a couple of years ago, was it? Yes, uh, 2018, uh, end of 2018. So I started in uh, end of October, November. Yes, uh, in 2018. Okay. Yeah. So, so what was the story behind that? So uh, I, I try to go to art events, uh, and one of them that I enjoy is uh, IFCC that happened in Croatia. Yeah. Um, and I saw that uh, Marco the Djordjevic, uh, the, the founder of uh, Six More Vodka, was going to the, uh, to the event and I sent him a message on Facebook like just to say like, hey, hopefully we can meet up, um, like, would like to meet you. Uh, and I guess he went onto my social media, saw the art, uh, and he sent me a message saying like, hey man, saw your portfolio, love your work. Uh, are you looking for work? Like, let's talk, you know? Um, and I remember like when I got that message, like just like, Took me a while to reply because I just like was so out of it, and then eventually replied. Went to IFCC, met him, and he does uh, like portfolio reviews and recruitment at these events. Um, so I met him, and it went well. And then he called over the producer, and it was like, okay, we're giving this guy an artist. Uh, wow! And then I sat down with the producer for a while, uh, and then just had like a, a little chat, and it was like, okay, cool then left IFCC with like this crazy feeling, got home, opened my email, there's the art test, and then like, you know, it got like a bit real, uh, and then had two weeks to, to do the art test, uh, and then, yeah, submitted, and then just got that message, like, hey man, like, this is good, uh, we'd like You're to welcome. have you, and it was, wow. yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, and and the weird thing is like I had SMV on my radar, yeah. but they were my my long term goal, you know, yeah. like my five year plan. Uh, I never thought I'd get it as soon as I did because uh, the the studio's quality of work is just crazy, uh, and I never thought that I could participate there. So uh, it, it was just like a complete like. Oh, wow. You know? So yeah. do you like stalk people on social media? <laughs> Meaning like potential employers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just a fan of great artists. So it, it just okay. so happened to like line up that way. But. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, it was like, maybe that's a good strategy if it worked for you. Jesus Christ. Everybody should maybe. be doing this. <laughs> you, have to be, you have to be tactful about it though. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like whatever works, that's the point. <laughs> You know? worked for some people you don't know <laughs> well good one um <laughs> but uh so how long did it take you to actually relocate i mean from you know from the date when you got the the email that you're welcome okay. to the date when to the day when you started working i mean uh, i was yeah i was scheduled to go start first of august um, mm -hmm. So I had like three weeks. Uh, they, and they IFCC, to from what weeks. I remember, IFCC is, uh, happens in March or something, no? Yeah, I think that shit happened um, end of June. Okay, yeah, okay. Oh, well, that's, that's got down quick. Yeah, so, so basically I was told like the visas, you know, would uh, take like three weeks. And then uh, when I went to the embassy, they were like, oh, like we only give 10 um, working visas a month so the only appointment I could get was like in three months time okay fine but so whatever I was like oh okay uh, yeah and then at some point uh, spoke to the company they managed to get a letter from a lawyer to like you know uh, get the visa yeah to kind uh, of expedite push. the process yeah yeah uh, so that helped a lot and I was lucky because then I quit my job and then it was like, oh, it's going to take you three months to get your visa. And then I went back to my boss and I was like, hey, man, like, I can't be three months without a salary. And he was like, yeah, yeah, dude, like, you know, like, stay as long as you need. So uh, it, it was a, a, a testament to uh, how great the, the previous boss was. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, like, uh, the relationship that I had with the studio. So uh, it, it was uh, an amazing studio in terms of the people. So. 
Nice. Nice. So tell me a little bit more about your current, you know, your current job. I know there is a lot of sensitive content. Um, I know that you can't talk about projects that you're working on now, but just in general, we're really curious to hear about like, you know, the culture and maybe some of the previous projects. What is it like for you? Mm -hmm. Do you still have to do like 60 fantasy characters uh, <laughs> per month maybe, or, you know, what, what do you do no. as a concept uh, artist? Uh, so so we do we do a bunch of characters uh, right now we do uh, mainly illustrations which is weird for me like you know concept artists to going into illustrations but um, man the, the the dynamic at the studio is uh, is something that also was uh, pretty surprising to me um, I think it's like the the truest form of teamwork uh, so you know everyone helps everyone and everyone's in everyone's pieces and uh the the work that i create at work uh i i cannot do on my own you know okay so i i do far greater work uh in collaboration with the team uh, than i could ever do by myself right now so uh, it, it's awesome just being a part of something that's uh, that big you know um, and yeah just just the people there uh, it's it's humbling every day is a humbling experience uh, walking through the thresholds of those doors it's uh, wow a little bit really, intimidating really interesting yeah. but like you still keep creating stuff by yourself on your time oh oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so how does it how does it split you know uh, your work like by yourself versus versus you know like your uh like kind of a job so do you have something like a schedule that you want to do like an hour a day of sketching or i don't know or it's just like so your time? yeah so i i get into work uh sometimes about an hour earlier um and then i'll just do like a warm-up sketch and maybe a character or study or something um and then i i have a healthy separation between my personal work and my office work you know so um, my personal work is something that I do to relax and unwind and just chill. It's like I just love uh, creating uh, and designing. So uh, more often than not, the stuff that I create personally is to satisfy myself. Uh, so it's always very different from the stuff that I'll do at work. Uh, so it's it's just it's just. Uh, experimenting and uh, just trying new things uh, so it's one of my favorite things to do so wow well that's amazing yeah. you know that that is really amazing like still loving what you do on all the sides 100 percent. i mean you have to right uh, <laughs> yeah somebody has to like what they do <laughs> Some well yeah i mean you have an industry full of people who are supposedly passionate about art so that's true. That's true. Okay. So talking about art, um, um, one of the topics that I really wanted to, uh, to bring this conversation to today is actually about the concept artists in general. So um, what do you think are different options that are out there for folks that are looking into going into concept art? You know, because obviously there are studios, like in your case, there is the video game industry and uh, mm -hmm. what you were um, into before. But what are like some of the other options? Because I'm sure you did your homework really well. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. But... Oh, come on. Like when, when <laughs> you like, change jobs a couple of times, you definitely yeah, know yeah, yeah. what's out there. So what would be yeah. some other options for a concept artist that you know, wants to break in the industry? I, I mean, you know, there's there's the obvious ones of just uh, concept studios, right? Um, but I've I've met some interesting people along my way, and they've had some interesting things. Like uh, one of my best friends back home, uh, he he worked for a uh, like a prosthetic company that would do prosthetics for films. And so he would have to do the concepts and model them in ZBrush over the actors' uh, scalps 
and then they would actually like make 3D prints and actually make the 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 practical costumes onto people, you know, so like the orcs and they yeah. would actually do that in ZBrush and then get it like 3D printed and so I was like, what? That's that's crazy. You that know, is wow. crazy. That is a bit crazy. Yeah. Yes, very uh, neat. So I mean, yeah, and and I mean like uh, one of one of the one of the biggest things that I see is that you know there's like the few big studios that everyone wants to work at: Riot, Blizzard, uh, Naughty Dog, uh, Sony Santa Monica. And it's like when people can't get into there, then they they say, "Oh man, it's like it's so hard to break into the industry." And the truth is, it's not. It's just that. Uh, people need to be a bit more realistic and it's like those companies have the pick of whoever they want and they're going to take the best guys and it's like but you know like me starting off at a mobile game studio you know there's tons of mobile game studios out there and they hiring constantly and they're making so much content um, you know and it's like if if the goal is to just break in um, I would say like just you know just be realistic about your ambitions and goals um, and and just look look in a more realistic place like uh, so I, I I think there's there's work for everyone and on all levels it's just about being smart about the market right which is which is tricky to really um, get to understand because no one really talks about the market uh, yeah and how so to, what, how what's to play what's so. the market for you what's the whole like you know uh, um, the the market for this industry what is it like? Mm -hmm. Is it big guys and small guys, or is it big guys, um, then a lot of variety in between, and then a lot of small guys and uh, a lot of deviation? How does it look like, and what's the role of a character of sorry concept artist in it? Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, you, you can you can look at it like on a on a scale or a spectrum so you can go all the way from like indie development all the way to like triple a games right yeah. and then your indie development will be like you know from sometimes even two to like five people um and you know they they normally like startups and they'll be juniors and you know it's uh it's a very creative fun way to start um and you know so so it's also like less money so it's, you know you need to be smart about that uh, and then yeah just just being like um like realistic with yourself about where you stand in terms of your, your abilities and what you can do um mm -hmm. and so then, yeah, like, like, are you saying that you wouldn't be able to get to the place where you are at like right away so you're saying that you did need the buffer of a mobile game studio to learn the skill and I mean no. So so my my route was that I was very much self taught and and without uh, a lot of access early to the tutorials and stuff that are out now. Uh, we have guys that are uh, you know straight out of college, uh, you know, but uh, they they had the access to um, great teachers. Uh, they they had a great personal motivation and drive that you know and discipline that had them grinding uh, countless hours, you know, so, so it's like uh, the, the, the people at the studio are, are very uh, niche. Okay. So, but, but it's like, it's, it's something that I think everyone has the ability to do where it's like just consistency and perseverance. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't happen as often as that. So, uh, People aren't a lot of people aren't willing to sit and study for eight hours a day, you know. So yeah, definitely. I mean, at some point, I guess you can easily <clears throat> lose this motivation when you don't know why you're mm -hmm. doing this or you don't believe that you can actually achieve something that you're working towards. Yeah, I mean, it's it it's it is um, a tough road, and um, you know, uh, a part of that is also like just like a, a mental battle, you know. So uh, a lot of people see what's out there and they uh, uh, their spirits break where it's like, oh, I'll never be good enough. Or, you know, so what's the point? And once they once they believe that, they're going to lose. So if you lose that mental battle, it's like, it's done. And uh, 
I, I gave a, a talk at a, at a college once and this guy sort of like stuck with me. Uh, and he was so convinced that you need like uh, some sort of uh, innate talent to do it. And I was, I kept on trying, I'm like, dude, like, you know, I just, I just grind it. And he's like, yeah, but you have the talent. And I could see on his face that he was so defeated by like the stuff that we were showing them because we went as a studio. And I, I worry about that guy sometimes because I'm like, I wonder if, if he overcame that or if he didn't. But uh, when I see that, chances are they don't, and uh, it's it's very unfortunate. But it's like anyone can do it. It's just they just really need to put in the time and effort. That's all it boils down to, really. Right. Wow, this is really really interesting. I mean, actually, I'm to I totally agree with you that it's the huge amount of this is grinding, like rise and mm -hmm. grind, and you just definitely going to be steps ahead, hundred percent. Uh, but what do you think is the difference in between, you know, an actually a successful concept artist and somebody who's mediocre? Um, is it because after you're done with schooling, that's mm -hmm. on you. So right. and some people do grow and some people just stay where they are or grow not that fast. So what differentiates mm -hmm. the two? Um. I have personal taste is one. Okay. You know, so uh, the industry is a lot of trends. So, you know, it's like Last of Us comes out. Everyone and their mother is making Last of Us fan art, you know. And then it's like, it's hard for people to really stand out. And, uh, and no one's really chasing something authentic. Uh, you know, it, it was one of the one of the things I, I spoke with Marco, like, why me? Because the thing was that they they do a lot of illustration and I've only done concept. And he was like, uh, you have a voice, you know, so he was like, uh, he doesn't want someone that can draw like him. He's already at the studio. So why would he want someone that will come in and bring something to the table? You know, and that's that I think is the mistake that a lot of people do. So if they want to work at Blizzard, they're just doing orcs and they're not showing anything uh, that can be valuable to the studio in terms of design and solving problems and uh, really uh, doing something authentic. You know? So okay. it's like, there's, there's uh, yeah, so it's like a sea of people that, uh, if, if you didn't know them and you just looked at their art, you'd think it's the same person. Yeah. Although this is a very controversial idea because in most cases, uh, you know, when you speak with the artist, you'll get an idea that, oh, if you want to get into this and that studio, show them that you can blend in, like make an orc no. in other ways. No. So, so this is what I'm saying, but, but then, you could do an orc in a way that only you could do it, right? Instead of doing what's already been done. So I get that, you know, sometimes you have to cater your portfolio. You have to show them, number one, you can work within their style. Uh, yeah. You can participate within their pipeline, but then you also need to show like, why should they hire you and not the, the 10 other uh, guys Work doing guys. orcs? Yes. Right? So it's like, and that's the thing, like like a studio, like like Blizzard, for instance, can basically choose who they want. So it's like a lot of the people will just not even make it past their, their HR's desk because they're not hitting um, any any meaningful markers for the company. Yeah. It's like... Very interesting. Very interesting. And so the other thing that you just mentioned was about solving problems. I think this is something yes. that uh, that is never uh, spoken about. So, what is problem solving for a concept artist or for an artist in general? How do you see that? So, so as a concept artist, problem solving is your job, right? So, you get a problem, your brief. Okay, we want a character with uh, a sword and a gun, and okay, so now you need to take that and do something with it interesting uh, for the project. Uh, and it's like uh, simple things, uh, just just like uh, oh, uh, <laughs> it's so tricky to put into words. 
Um, yeah, I know because normally but, you put it in graphics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, well, concept art is is not about making the the pretty pictures, uh, not all of the time. Like, uh, I'd say majority of the work is actually the the design, the the problem solving. And it's like uh, people pursue uh, techniques and pretty paintings. Um, and sometimes you'll get the occasional guy, like uh, someone like Sheng Lam, you know, who's uh, uses pen uh, and paper, and he's just a phenomenal designer. And he has a design language that is just not seen uh, anywhere else. Like he's super fresh, uh, very prolific at what he does, uh, and so he he can basically do what he wants. Uh, Wow. And that's the thing. It's like you you want to be in that position where um, you're doing things that people want in their games or in their projects, uh, not you trying to be a part of people's projects. I love that. I think this is really interesting because you always have to see yourself as part of the eventually like commercial project because that's what you're paid for. Um, which is, right. of course, yeah, for an artist, a little bit again controversial because you're an artist, but mm -hmm. if you are hired. Mm -hmm you want to solve somebody's problem, not just, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, uh, Feng Zhu put it this way, and he was like, uh, we are designers first, artists second. So uh, we use art to communicate our solutions to problems. That's what it is, so consider it as a language. So uh, it's, it's very different from, let's say, illustration, you know, if you're working for a company like Magic, because then, your art is actually the product that gets sold to the clients. Whereas in concept art, like your art is not the product. The product is the game or the movie. Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, you need to solve like uh, the director's problems. You know, he needs to visualize the scenes before they spend money building sets. And so they need to see it before uh, they spend money on it. So, uh, you know, small things like that, uh, I think, uh, just not considered, especially with with the uh, younger artists, yeah, trying to break in because and and I and I think like social media is part to blame because you know be, like art station can be daunting for people when they just go on and they just see like all this amazing art. It's like yeah, but that's that's like a part of it, you know. Yeah, so. well, you know what? Like just putting in my five cents before we have we, we had this podcast recording I actually went on uh, your studio website and I oh yeah yeah because I love stalking people on social media apparently <laughs> <laughs> so not only social media <laughs> I just went through all the art stations and all the Instagrams and I was pretty amazed mm -hmm. to see that uh, um, you know the um, your the your colleagues from the studio not necessarily have amazing following on both art station and instagram they definitely do have amazing work but it's not reflected in the numbers in like you know like the stereotypical social media numbers and that's yeah you know what people are sometimes hunting for this <coughs> vanity mm -hmm. bs that is mm -hmm. that eventually doesn't mean where you are standing it's just right. something so um, I, I just thought that it's pretty interesting that. Yeah, you know. it is. Um, uh, I, I think part of that is that. Uh, so, so like me, it's that the only reason I'm on social media is to like promote art, I guess, or my art. Uh, and now that I'm at SMV, it kind of slowed down because now I'm sort of in like learning mode um, and I'm happy right now. So there's like no real need to be really posting or being online uh, uh, so and then i think a lot of the guys are in the same sort of boat where they're not really 100%. social media people 100%, because why uh, yeah uh, uh, and yeah and um, it's it's interesting because i think them being being off it as well like gives them uh, an edge so they're not uh, overly influenced by what's happening in the in the industry and uh, they're looking at other things, which is also just interesting to me, you know, like a lot of real world stuff and um, 
Yeah. It's a very interesting story. A lot of, of course, real world is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the best. <laughs> I know. That's, I love this kind of conclusion. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Real world is like goddamn interesting. <laughs> I mean that that's part of the problem, right? Is that like people just looking at art and not really looking at life. Yeah. Um, and so they everyone's a derivative of another person's interpretation. Yeah. Of yep. know, what's going on. So definitely, yeah. definitely. So let me bring this back a little bit, you know, like even closer mm -hmm. to real life. So are you so now that you live in Europe, are you in touch at all like with uh, uh, South Africa and uh, you know do you even consider ever going back maybe that's not you know the right question maybe you definitely mm -hmm. are definitely coming back but you know what's your take <laughs> on now on the ceiling in South Africa and how it works with uh, your life and you know I, I mean I definitely want to go back um, you know um, I, I still keep comms with uh, the previous studio, uh, uh, the, the guy that I was saying that done the, pros the prosthetics for like the film stuff. Uh, he he replaced me at the previous studio, and we we like best friends, so uh, I keep I keep in close uh, communication with him. Like we talk about the studio and what's happening and discussing like problems and solutions and. Uh, so it's it's pretty it's pretty cool, and we still talk about like you know developing something back home, as um, just to sort of hopefully inspire the industry to grow. Mm -hmm. So I ideally I want to do uh, an outsource studio there, and there's a lot of potential there that doesn't have a a place to express and reach potential, and I'd like to maybe develop something where that can take place and mm -hmm. there's like one or two studios that uh, have great people and great projects but everyone else is sort of just like cannon fodder right now unless yeah. unless they have the ability to leave the country uh, or they manage to break into a freelance market mm -hmm. they pretty much gonna struggle so yeah and so do you see like there's the huge like salary difference in between let's say South Africa in your case and Europe? Uh, yes, um, cost of living in South Africa is way lower. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, uh, I, I mean we had American clients paying us in dollars there. So uh, we loved great, <laughs> which was, uh, <laughs> it was good. It was a good, good life. Um, coming to Berlin, I didn't expect it to be this expensive, uh, especially around the property market. Like mm -hmm. property uh, is so sought after. Yeah. So it's it's highly valuable, and so uh, the, it's reflected in the prices. So okay. Uh, I, I was not expecting that. So but yeah, no, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it's fine. Uh, the the lifestyle and the, the personal growth that I got from being here is is worth it. Yeah, no, definitely. I guess it's never possible just to compare numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, you have it's to. A very tricky yeah, thing. yeah, no, definitely. You have to compare the whole package. Yeah. So so like right now, it's like I got access to like Europe. You know, like I can fly an hour and I'm in like Paris or hour I'm in Switzerland and go to Croatia. You know, if I wanted to go to IFCC from South Africa, you know, I have to like save for a couple of months just for the flights. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. I it's see. always a mission. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Well, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, we're comparing two different lives, basically, of one person, but two mm -hmm. different lives. So that's it. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Okay. Look. I think we're pretty much done with my questions, except for mm -hmm. the last bit that is uh, our traditional <laughs> speed round. Yes, thank you. Like, glad you know yeah. that the speed round. So, all I'm right, gonna... let's go. Let's go. <sighs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know you're prepared. So, there are two <laughs> questions, and then you're mm -hmm. replying in one, three words 
um, up to one sentence. So I'm just going to read that to you. And uh, yeah, and you go. So what's your favorite place in the world? Uh, split. Split. Croatia. Croatia. Yeah, for now. For now. What happened there? <laughs> so you don't have to answer that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> What, what, what you're listening to while you're working? A uh, lot of metal. Okay. What's your favorite yeah. way to gain inspiration? Oh, watch anime. <laughs> My God. <laughs> uh, what's your big life goal? Uh, be happy. I don't know. Good one. What's your favorite <laughs> drink? Uh, beer. Beer. What's yeah. the first thing that you do in the morning after you wake up? Oh, go back to sleep. <laughs> All right. So it's just like me actually. Okay. Uh, what's just your backup? Just the snooze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your backup career? Oh, backup career. I don't think I have one. If if I could choose and be something else, if there's um, maybe a musician, maybe in a band, I don't know. Wow. That's, that yeah. Makes, yeah. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe right. one day. Maybe, maybe one, day. One, day. one day, you know, like uh, reinventing yourself after you're like 65 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hells yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's your recent <laughs> favorite movie or a book? Ah. Oh, oh, that's a tough one. I don't know. Recent, recent movie. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be a recent topic. movie. Your recent movie or like TV show. What do you watch? Do you watch something? Joke, Joker, I guess. It was good. I like Joker a lot. Okay. No, I haven't seen Joker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, even if it's not considered as a Joker movie, as a standalone, it could have been still as powerful i think it's, okay it's just cool good writing good cinematography good um so who are some of the people that you admire oh man i can name everyone in the studio <laughs> um. <laughs> well and that is actually easy because there is uh, there is a team section of the website <laughs> yes so so please go and check it out sixmovodka.com okay uh, of can course. see all the work, but special mention to uh, Gerald Barral. Uh, okay, he, he's Shameless our plug. lead. He's the lead in our studio, uh, and and it's it's so cool. I get to work with my favorite artist in the world. So, wow, that is that is actually very inspiring. Like, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Okay, yeah. and the last one. What are some of your favorite? What are some of the things on your bucket list? Bucket list. Oh man. Do you have one to start with? I just hope I see tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is um, it life in Berlin? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's my life. I'm I'm in constant uh, risk of danger. I don't know. Danger okay. seems to find me. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, travel, travel more, travel a lot. And uh, see tomorrow. Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh my God. Okay. Like I, I really hope I see you next time I'm in Berlin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys must let me know when you come through. Be definitely. Fun. Definitely. All right. So Nico, I think we're done then for today. You know, it's, uh, it's getting late in Berlin. Uh, so it's time to go and find more danger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> uh oh. <Yeah. laughs> not sure but, how dangerous that is. <laughs> with my luck, with my luck, you never know. That's but, right. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me, man. No, it, thank you so awesome. much. And, uh, you know, uh, my pleasure. Thanks for sharing the whole bunch of insights. And, uh, you know, our actually, our intake of the next uh, Stylist Character Program starts in about a week. So we're going to oh, have yeah. a lot more of your work <laughs> in 3D very soon. So I'm also That's awesome. pretty goddamn excited. Lots of more material coming to social media. Gonna tag yeah, you yeah. I have, I have a bunch of stuff to update, so... Yeah, please better. do, so that, you know, we have more for them. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, nice roster for people to choose from. So people love your work. So you know, I'm happy to have you on the show <laughs> this week. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you. It means a lot that you guys reached out. Yeah. All right. Cheers, Nico. I'm gonna turn off right. the recording. Cheers. Ciao.